as you all know, there's a cover of Chess Life from 72, and it's Brezhnev talking to Spassky. Okay, you're a big fan of Brezhnev, right? And Spassky has a chess board and he's analyzing, they have computers in. And there's books everywhere. And all the books are E4 openings, because Fisher plays E4. And Brezhnev says, but Boris, what if Fisher doesn't play pawn to king four? Right? So it's supposed to be funny. And then Fisher didn't play E4. So the magazine showed them that joke jokes on somebody. And he played C4. The Fisher played E4, but he played C4. Yeah, he played it perfect. So okay, so they played a Queen's Gambit declined by transposition. I've had white in this position more times than you've played chess games. I've had white in this position a lot. Okay, I faced h6 a lot. Now, Fisher played bishop h4, the most common move. I usually take on f6. And the reason is I want to avoid the tartar cower, which is what black played. I avoid that. Now, I haven't always avoided it. Sometimes I play bishop h4, but usually I take on f6. Okay, and then b6 is the tartar cower. Okay. And Fisher played this variation that's supposed to be boring. And they actually play this way now. This is still theory now. All of this. And a6 is a mistake, I think. I'm not a fan of a6. It doesn't really threaten the bishop because the a pawn is pinned. But it, it doesn't lose. But it's not probably not the best move. I think there was a game, Nakamura Hari Krishna from like three years ago, and black played king f8, and the game was a draw later. The point is this queen is not defended, so you can never move this pawn. But if you play king f8, then you can move the pawn. Your queen's defended. OK, a6, takes, takes castles. And there was a game played. Um, uh, no, that was, that was another game. That's later. R remind me to say that later. OK, rook a7 defending the queen. Now we're threatening this. You see how, the, see how the queen's defending the rook and vice versa? So now you can't play queen takes rook, and you can't win a queen this way. So rook a7 defends everything. OK, bishop back, and knight to d7. OK, in fact, wait, was I right? I was right. So there was a game played. In, yeah, I was right. I thought it was another game, but it is this game. There was a game play between Furman and Geller, and these players knew those players really well. And in 1970, I believe, and black played a5. And Spassky played knight d7. And after laying my engine sit for a minute, knight d7 is better. So I guess they analyzed this and concluded knight d7 was better. Okay. Now, Fisher played a move that a child would really like. So for the children in the audience, what did White play here? Only a child would like it. Mm -hmm. Knight d4. Very good. You proved you're a child. Good job. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And of course, that move wouldn't be possible, except there's a lot of pinning going on here. Everything's pinning everything. So you can't take that knight. Now, that's funny. The first move Fisher made that maybe Spassky had analyzed, Spassky now made a mistake. Yeah. Okay. He played queen f8. That, that's no good. Okay. And actually, uh, about 20 years ago, I was playing in a tournament in Michigan, because I'm from Michigan, and I was playing like an A player expert ish type guy. And I did the same thing that Fisher did here. I, I learned from this game. And that is, in this position where this bishop looks really stupid, you take it, and then you play the move, the aggressive move, the attacking in the center move. E4. E4, yeah. And I had a very similar um, position to this, where I played this and I won pretty easily. Um, and now Stasky made another mistake. So queen f 8s a mistake because you actually want to take with the queen probably so that e4 stopped. So king f 8s better, knight f6 is better. Yeah, queen f 8s not good. Okay. And now Spassky made a positional mistake. It's the kind of mistake I would expect a low-rated player to make, not Spassky. Okay. Um, he gave up the white squares and gave white's bishop a nice square. He played d4. That's a bad move because now white's bishop can sit on c4. Yeah, so that, that's now black's position is not very harmonious. Now Fisher did this. <coughs> F4, rawr. So we have this boring positional game before knight d4, where I like white's a little bit better positionally. There's an isolated pawn. These are called hanging pawns. The bishop is being blocked. 
white has a perfect pawn structure, sort of boring. And then it gets all exciting. <coughs> F4. Play queen e7. Should have played king h8 because there could be a pin potentially here on the diagonal with the bishop and the queen. King's much safer on h8. <coughs> queen e7, e5, stopping the black knight from going f6. Rook b8, activating the rook. King h8. Queen h3, threatening e6. That's annoying. Knight f8. B3, obviously black would take this. So B3, F5, rawr. And again, sort of like in the last game, if you don't turn a computer on and you look at the position, you like white. Well, that would be the same here. You show Grandmaster this position, I mean, white has everything. These, these pawns are useless. They're never gonna move. This is a great bishop. This is a great rook. Uh, White's advancing, terrible for black. <clears throat> now we can't allow f6, so takes it. Rook here, queen d8. My favorite move is coming up. It's not a good move, it's my favorite move. Okay, I think it's, is it here? No, yeah. So obviously white's killing it. Yeah. So, uh, queen e8. Yeah, a4, that's my favorite move. When you play a4, you're telling your opponent, well, you can't do anything. Yeah. There's no reason for a4. It's just black could play a4 and get rid of his isolated pawn, but now he can't. You get the b5 square in case you want to go here. And you just tell your opponent, like, I can do anything and you can't move. So it's just like, ah, you can't move. Yeah. So a lot of people would resign here, but it's good that he didn't because we get to see some tactical tricks. Hey. Yeah. Yeah, this is nice, queen, queen e6. Notice in this position, this pawn's incredibly defended. Then when he plays bishop d3, he undefends his pawn, and Spassky says, ooh, I'm gonna take that pawn. And Fisher says, go right ahead. Yeah. <laughs> so what happens if you take it? Rook f8. Yeah, rook f8, very good. Now we're threatening mate, because I said so. So you take with a knight, and then you take it again, and you get another rook for you, yeah. So Spassky fell for that, right? Yeah. No. no. So he played knight f6. And now I gave a lecture on this move about three months ago. The lecture was only about moves like this. Rook takes. Yeah, sacrifice the exchange. Rawr. Rooks are better than bishops. Which, which one of these rooks is better than this bishop? Man, they're the worst rooks ever. This pawn's worth like two rooks, this rook's worth three rooks, and this is worth four rooks. <laughs> yeah. These, these, these are the worst pawns ever. They got nothing going on for them. Still doesn't resign. King g8, bishop c4 with the idea of rook f7. Now let's make a random legal move. Uh, he didn't do that. Then rook f7, your turn. Resigns. <laughs> Correct. Yay. Yeah. There's some things you don't want to do, like play black here. Yeah. Okay, so Spassky didn't like that. He played king h8. And then queen f4. You guys would take with check because you can't help it. No. Which would win. Queen f4 threatening rook f8 check with advantage. And queen h6 check with advantage. So let's see what the engine says now. Rawr. Forced mate. Yeah, and obviously Black resigned.